On today's podcast, we're talking about the time I met Rob Chapman and Rabia Massad. Hi, I'm Jeff Starr, and this is episode two of the Not Bad Films podcast. I'm here with Adrian Locke. Hello. And today I'm going to share the story about when I met uh, Rob Chapman. Like probably a lot of people, I probably knew Rob Chapman's videos from you know, on YouTube. Oh, I love those early videos. In the early days of YouTube and all that, you know. Yeah. I seemed like a cool guy. I kind of like that stuff. And the videos were entertaining, and, and I liked um, the silly stuff that he would do with, with uh, Lee Anderton. Yeah, they would dress up and do funny voices, stuff like that. Yes. And I sort of realized that, that Rob had kind of made it to some degree when I was actually at the Guitar Center in Times Square in New York City, and I was just there on a lunch break. I heard someone playing the Dorje riff that he would always play in the... Anderton's videos, or his videos, I should say, with, with Lee Anderton. This is like before Anderton's had their own channel. I was like, what? Why Why, why am I here? Like, it totally blew my mind. Someone had learned this uh, YouTube guy's, you know, riff, and they were playing it just like they would play Stairway or Smoke on the Water. Uh-huh. Cut two years later, Rob had done the... The U.S. tour with um, Rift City Guitars. That was some drama. Yes, it, it was. And I'm sure most of the young kids today won't really know about that. But Rift City Guitars was one of the, I think, first U.S. distributor. They had invested a lot of money and had Rob come over and do tours and stuff. And then Chapman Guitars got a deal with Guitar Center and they had like a new model. Yeah. But Chapman Guitars were going to be in Guitar Centers and he was going to come and visit a bunch of guitar centers with Rabia and do like a clinic meet and greet type thing. And obviously it was going to, the idea was to sell a bunch of guitars. A real sausage fest at those events. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, I guess it probably was. Anyway, so if you actually go back and you watch the videos from uh, Rob's uh, vlog at the time, you can see the back of my head in a lot of those videos. Um, it's a pretty small room, and I really don't totally remember a lot of what they did. They played a couple songs. Um, they did play Boss Katanas, which I thought was true to form. They chatted about gear, um, and they took a ton of questions. At one point, there was something sort of awkward where he was asking, like, a, a, a you know, a kid who was there, like, what song, what, what's your favorite Dorje song? What song do you want to hear us play? And of course, the kid didn't have any idea of what any of the songs were. Yeah, that's pretty awkward. Yeah, they, they, I think they ended up just playing that, like, sort of song you would always hear in the Anderton's videos. You know, Rob was super nice to everyone. He seemed very genuine. Like I said, he sort of took time to sort of, to make sure that the those younger fans that probably asked their parents to bring them, that they got to be up front and, and meet him and all that stuff. And at the end of the event, they filed us all out and got us all back in a line so that we could, if we wanted, to, like do a photo and say hi. Yeah. And this was also to facilitate them selling just guitars. And they had a bunch of guitars out. A lot of people did buy guitars. And, and by the time I sort of snaked my way through the line with everyone else, they had two two guitars left. One, which was a, 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 a baritone. I think it was the Bia Signature baritone guitar. I think there was and another guitar, which I can't totally recall. And they may have even both been baritones. You love baritone guitars too. Yes, and I was actually very tempted to buy one. I was very much debated, like, oh, sh you know, like, should I get one of these? Because they were sort of doing like, they were like a little less expensive because of the event, but it was still gonna be like 700 or 800 bucks or something. You should have got, you should have bought one. I texted my wife while I was in line. I was like, maybe I should buy this because I could do a review of it. Because there was not a lot of actual independent reviews of Chapman guitars on YouTube at the time. To be honest, I don't think there's really that many now. I mean, they, I know they're selling guitars, but I've never actually seen really anyone using one. Yes, I guess that's sort of the the uh, the, the question, right? I mean, someone's buying them, uh, and I'd be curious to know uh, why we don't almost see more of them, because from a spec standpoint, they always have seemed like pretty decent guitars and good value for money. You should have bought one. I didn't really have the money to do it at the time, and I did play it, but I wasn't super thrilled with that baritone. I already had, I believe, my Reverend, so that plays much more like a like a regular guitar, and I believe that this was a 30-inch, sort of like vintage-style baritone scale length. 
which for me, it just, I didn't really need it. It didn't, the neck was really thin. In all honesty, it felt like a baritone that was designed by someone who had not actually played a lot of baritones. Oh, that's weird. Whereas the, the Reverend is very much a, a baritone that's like, let's figure out how to make a really usable baritone guitar. A more modern sort of a take on it. And whereas this felt sort of like, let's take a vintage sort of way of doing it and just sort of like put some modern appointments on it. Um, the store was now technically closed where they were letting us sort of f file out. And there was a pressure to like get out of there because I think employees didn't necessarily want to keep hanging around. Anyways, I did get a chance to to go up in the little room, you know, it was my turn. Rob was saying goodbye to someone, so I just talked to Rabia first for like, it was very much like go, 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 right? At the time, they were doing these sound like videos, um, Rabia was shooting those. Yeah. And I said, oh, you guys should do a sound like Frank Zappa video because Zappa, of course, is really known for distinct sounds and using gear in a lot of unique ways. He was like, oh yeah, I think he mentioned like one maybe Zappa tune. And I definitely got the impression that he didn't really know Zappa's music and he wasn't really into it. And I, of course, I'm like a Zappa nerd, so. Yeah, um, not everyone thinks Zappa's as important as you do. Whatever, but he was cool. You know, he's sort of like, oh yeah, sure, okay. Yeah, well, Zappa's only been dead since 93. Rob finished up with his previous guest and he turned to say hi. And he was super chill. It was very welcoming. He definitely came off warm, very friendly, like you've seen in his videos. I will say, like, my very cynical New York City gut check, right? Um, I actually felt like he was true to form. It didn't feel like it was an act or BS or anything like that. In the short bit of time I had, one of the things I told him is that actually he had sort of inspired me uh -huh. to sort of lose sort of my snotty inhibitions about making videos. So like I'm someone who'd gone to film school and like I'm gonna make movies and do that stuff. And I'd worked in TV and I sort of like, in my head, YouTube was this place where like, I don't know, I would just make little dumb things. You mean like now? Well, I guess in a way, but the sense is I didn't take it as something that was serious in a way to like do creative express or, or that I should try to like do something for real. It was just like, yeah, you throw something up there. As I, you know, had watched these videos and I realized that these YouTubers were making more videos than I was. And I'd been someone who'd made videos all the time as a kid and all through college and all this stuff. And I was like, a, you know, thought of myself as some video guy. They're doing it more than me. And I was very inspired by that. Hold on, I gotta get a drink of water. He inspired me to sort of like do my own YouTube channel, which is of course now whatever this channel is still. And at the time I was really posting videos just about the sitar and learning the sitar and sort of making a vlog about my process of learning Indian classical music and learning the sitar. We all smiled, they took like one or two photos and they gave me the, the phone and we shook hands and I sort of left. I was sort of like, this guy was cool and Ruby was cool and it felt like they were just some real dudes who'd had like this weird surge of internet-ness and they were riding that wave and they weren't like real celebrities. It felt like they still couldn't believe that this was even a thing. And they were trying to be like really cool about it and make sure that everyone got a chance to meet them and say hello. And so I would say like, even now I'm still sort of like rooting for Chapman guitars, even though there's been some weird internet hate about Rob. And, and you know, that also started me when the, when the stuff with Rift City guitar and they went out of business. And then they had those British guitars. Yes, they, they launched some really expensive British made guitars. And then those got canceled or like I had to stop those. And then they launched them again with a different builder. And then that went on, that builder went under. So there's been like weird struggles to try and do like a higher priced range. Yeah, I'm sort of curious, like, are they gonna pull that off? Yeah, I think that's gonna be interesting. Like can Chapman Guitars transition from sort of this, what used to be a, a low cost, high value brand where like you buy a guitar and you mod it. They had a sort of interesting business model to keep those costs down. The stores are doing the setup, so hopefully your store can do a good setup. Otherwise, your guitar is going to not be that great. But then they tried to like, you know, appeal like a higher range, like a like a more expensive guitar. And I think they've struggled in that sense. Yeah. The, they have that. The, they have the Danish Pete model, right? That. Um, oh yeah, they're sort of like Telecaster custom thing they've done with him. Yeah, and they've had T-style guitars in the past. I think it was smart of them to launch that as a higher priced version first. Like if I think about someone like PRS guitars, they'd always made these really expensive high-end guitars and they got big name. 
you know, celebrity guitar players use them like Carlos Santana or someone. And then that sort of slowly filtered down into making lower priced instruments. Yeah. Like the uh, SE range. Oh, and now that you got some the SE range is like, a, there's a 399 one? Yes, there's like, a, I think a, uh, uh, they just came out this year with like a $399 SE guitar, which is supposed to be very good. I've not had a chance to play it, but they've made this ability to make the message about how PRS is like a really high quality instrument. Like, oh yeah, we have these lower priced versions, but it's still gonna be really high quality. Totally. I think the Chapman sort of is the inverse of that, where they've made these like lower cost instruments that like you can mod and they're fun to buy and like hack up and, and you can throw some extra pickups in, but they've sort of struggled to go up. They, maybe they need to get like some bigger celebrities. They Did they get Steel Panther or something like that? Yeah, they've had, I think they've been trying to, to get more of that in. Like a, like a more of a celebrity type guitar player, but maybe like YouTube celebs are the new celebrity, like Rabia or Rob Scali and those types of guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like Greg Koch, right? Yeah. I mean, he was just doing demos on Wildwood and his personality is like so huge and hilarious and fun. And of course he plays super great. And now he's got a signature guitar, two signature guitars with Reverend, right? Yeah, he's got two. One's it's sort of like a... It looks like a telly, but it's shorter scale length, and it's P90s. It's basically like a, a 50 style Les Paul, but like in a telly package. Yeah, I think that's a pretty... Both of his guitars, I think, are really cool. For sure. His YouTube celebrity has made him more of a musician celebrity. Yeah. And he's got signature guitars. So I don't really know, like, who are the artists that you go after these days? Like, uh, you know... You know, speaking of Reverend Guitars, to just jump back for a second, I did see pics on Instagram of um, Rob and Ken Haas from Reverend, who's the CEO of Reverend. They were at the, the UK Guitar Show, and um, I thought that was interesting that they were sort of together and they did, they did some funny pictures together. I actually think it'd be cool to see something, some sort of like Reverend Chapman partnership. Like maybe you could get some rail hammer pickups and some Chapman guitars, stuff like that would be sort of fun to see. Yeah, that would actually be kind of fun. Like, like I know Chapman's got pickups, right? They're using their own branded pickups now. Yeah, they are. But I think like you could put some, some rail hammers in there. And that would be a fun way to sort of cross pollinate. And I mean, probably maybe it diminishes the, the brands a bit, but it would be sort of fun to see that. I know when I interviewed Ken, uh, for, for my interview series, which, uh, everyone should feel free to watch and listen to that. Check links. I know that he said that, you know, he does like doing partnerships. Um, uh, so it'd be sort of interesting to do that. Oh yeah. Like they put the Fishman pickups in the, in the Greg Cock guitar. Yeah. Rob, if you're listening and you ever want to do an interview, like I did with, um, Ken, please you know, reach out, right? I'd love to do an interview and talk. I've been sort of following your career for a really long time. I do would love to know more about Chapman and sort of like what's going on. So come on, Rob, let's let's have a conversation. Well, maybe he doesn't want to talk to you. Maybe he only wants to talk to me. Possibly. All right, so that's it for today. Um, if you like this video, you know, like, comment, subscribe. And I do have prints of my artwork for sale on Etsy. And there is a Patreon where you can get early access to these videos, all the behind the scene content on, on upcoming projects. And um, that's another, there's a fun space building out over there. Thank you so much for watching. And for listening. Get off the internet and go make something.